Hey there, this is Andrew, and I am going to go ahead and open my uh, Savior of Keyforge deck. So, uh, for people who don't know, if you backed Keyforge on the GameFound campaign, one of the uh, one of the rewards you got at any pledge level, I think it was at any pledge level, is a one of these cool Savior of Keyforge decks that has a uh, special coloring, and I've seen one in person. It looked very, very cool. So I'm excited about this. Actually, before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and open my Grim Reminders preview cards that I got in my box. Um, I'm expecting to get ones that are, you know, that have been done. So I'm not expecting to see anything new here, but figure it's fun to open on video just in case. So there should be three preview cards in here. And if nothing else, they could be fun to include in a cube. Um, it says, you help make this possible. Your pledge to support Keyforge has made it possible to provide you with these three preview cards from the forthcoming seventh set, Grim Reminders. That's very cool. Uh, it's possible that at least one of these cards was produced in a very limited supply. One might even be signed by Richard Garfield. Uh, yeah, so cards could change, yada, yada. All right, let's see what we got. And I think, yeah, I believe these three have all been spoiled before, but that's okay. It's still fun. Interesting, the little plastic baggie they're in, different from any of the other wrapping. And... Interesting, they have a whole card here with the list. But yeah, I got Curse of Obstinacy, which is a an artifact in Star Alliance. It's a treachery. It says at the end of your turn, you stun each friendly non-flank creature that shares a house with one of its neighbors. And then uh, one of the Geistoid cards, Spontaneous Awakening, says uh, it's an action that says play. If your opponent is haunted, destroy an enemy artifact, cyborg, or robot. If you do, after that card is destroyed, put that card in put it into play under your control. While under your control, it belongs to House Geistoid. And then Blunderbore is a six power giant in Bravnar that says after fight, if you are haunted, your opponent loses to Amber. Let me actually move this down a bit. Okay. So, yep, those are not new, but that's okay. Still pretty cool to have them. Ooh, and they have this preview card back. That's fun. All right. Um, I guess that's a funny thing about the internet. You know, things get spoiled and you do lose some of that discovery. I could have just not gone on certain groups and not seen stuff, but ha, I guess I have only myself to blame. I did not see any of this. So mm, let's see the name. The War Lady That Merges Ambition. That's a pretty cool name. Um, I, I'm going to guess Brobnar, Star Alliance, and Equidon. Well, I got one right. I got Star Alliance right, and then Sanctum and Unfathomable, and it looks like the token here is going to be, I think that's Cleric. We'll double check. And you can already see the different uh, styling on the on the card back, but that extends to the card front, right? Um, if we compare normal card back, this is from my uh, from my vanity deck. Very very different. Uh, yeah, so different template. Very cool, and it's a pretty cool archon too. All right, so there is the Archon card, and then let's see that token. Yeah, Cleric is a one-power human. Uh, after play, uh, after Cleric enters play, it captures one Amber. Um, it, I, I've played with this, and it can be quite good uh, if you can flood the board with these. It's a good way to keep your opponent off of forging. However, um, it's worth saying... Hmm. Two things, maybe. 
I feel like that art is so different. Uh, yeah, well, the other thing I was going to say is it's worth saying one power tokens are so tough to play into auto cannon ever. Um, and so obviously, you know, uh, auto cannon is not a crazy common card, but it is in this set at rare. So, you know, you could certainly run into it in set and if you do one power tokens are just so sad because auto cannon says deal one to, to each creature after it enters play. So, um, yeah, these really one power tokens really, really suffer against that. Um, and I'm just trying to look up the artwork here because I, I want to see if I'm, no, it is the same, it is the same art. It's just, with that different accenting, uh, I don't know. And it's such a big picture. I think that's part of it. But wow, that looks very cool. Okay, I'll stop gushing about that. So, cleric is the token, and let's see what else we get here. So we'll start in sanctum. Ooh, halo of enlightenment is an artifact, and it has an amber, and it says, oh, it's an upgrade, not an artifact. And it says, this creature cannot be attacked while its controller controls a token creature. And when you play it, you make a token creature. Wow, that's that's pretty cool. It just can't be attacked, though. You could damage the creature other ways. Harmonic Ritual, uh, action with an amber. When you play it, you choose a friendly creature. If its left neighbor shares a house with it, gain one and repeat this effect on that creature. So, um, potentially, if you spam the board with tokens, you could really... Uh, make a lot of amber here, especially you could create a lot of tokens on your sanctum turn and do this because they're well. No, I guess it wouldn't. It wouldn't really matter um, that it's a, a sanctum token. Alms master four power human knight with one armor. Deploy and taunt. Uh, when you play each of alms master's neighbors captures one, so you could actually end up capturing two. On you know get the clerics out. They each capture one. Play alms master between them. They capture another. Light Everlasting, action with an amber. When you play it, you play a Sanctum creature from your discard pile anywhere on your battle line. Um, that's pretty cool, especially if you get like uh, some nice creature uh, used as a token. That's a good way to bring it back, actually get the value. Ooh, Colonel Mariana is a five power spirit knight with one armor. When you play it, each friendly knight captures one. So far, only knight is Alms Master. And, well, and Mariana would capture one as well. The clerics are not knights, importantly, but they're capturing anyway. Cassiel the, Bene the Benevolent is also a knight. Uh, two power, two armor, human knight with enhance, an amber, and two captures. Oh, and actually, it, that amber is what's on Halo of Enlightenment. It wouldn't necessarily come with an amber. Got it. That's cool. And then we have Nidapult which is an artifact, it's a weapon, and it says action. The next time a friendly creature enters play this turn, you may have it enter anywhere in your battle line ready. Uh, that is, that's cool. Um, just having it interplay ready is nice. And actually, the cool thing is that could apply to a token creature as well. Uh, so extra value, but it would also apply to any of these knights that we've seen. Muster is an action that says play make a token creature. If your opponent has more amber than you, archive muster. Uh, so And the capture would happen first, so they'd have to have at least two more than you before you play this to get to archive it. Pandolf the Provoker got a capture icon and is a four power human knight with two armor and taunt. And when you play it, you enrage an enemy creature. That's pretty nice. Got another Pandolf, this one not enhanced. Uh, and then request donations. It's an action that says play, make a token creature. It captures two. Wow. So a lot of capture here in Sanctum. And one more card, I think. Taxing Journey, even more capture. Action with an Amber. Back from Dark Tidings. A friendly creature captures one. Each of its neighbors that shares a house with it captures one. Uh, we're not too creature heavy here, though. I don't think one, two, three, four five creatures um so yeah again not not too creature heavy let's see what we get in 
Starlights. Recruiting Station is an artifact and location. It has Omni choose a house. Discard the top card of your deck. If it belongs to the chosen house, make a token creature. Uh, nice. Potentially make a token creature every turn. Theoretically, it's like a roughly a one in three chance to make a token creature. Um, but there might be some ways that we could game that a little bit. Selective Preservation is an action that says play, choose a creature of each power level and destroy each creature not chosen. Then we've got CR Officer Hawkins, a two power human with deploy. And when you play him, you gain one amber for each of his non Star Alliance neighbors. Uh, really good since we have non Star Alliance tokens. Another Hawkins, very cool. CXO Tabor is a three power alien Kirksix with uh, after fight or reap. You may play or use a non Star Alliance card this turn. Uh, this creature ends up dying a lot, but if it does stay on the board, it's it's a really powerful effect to get to play a non-Star Alliance card or use a creature. That's a lot of flexibility. Friendly Guide is a three-power alien with elusive, and it says after you use one of its neighbors, you may use it. That's pretty cool. Recorded History, action with an amber. Play, reveal up to three cards of different houses from your hand archive each card revealed this way uh, often you'll you'd rather reveal just two cards of different houses and uh, and archive those because any star Alliance card you probably want to play but you never know there could be a uh, an exception to that rule maybe you want to save a, a CR officer Hawkins until you can get two amber out of playing it maybe you want to archive red alert to be honest red alert very nice board control. It's an action that says play. If there are more enemy creatures than friendly creatures, deal damage to each creature equal to the difference. And this is uh, really good against token boards, right? Because uh, they tend to be a little smaller. Rogue Operation is an action. When you play it, you discard the top two cards of your deck and steal one amber for each house represented among the discarded cards. So you're going to discard. You're going to steal at least one, possibly two. Very, very good. Specialist Guthrak is a three power alien hand you hand with skirmish and after it fights or reaps it captures one amber for each house represented among its neighbors. So up to two. We got another one of those. And then uplink is an upgrade with an amber and it gives the creature action make a token creature for each of this creature's non star alliance neighbors. So Starlands are really trying to reward you for uh, having heterogeneous boards. Um, okay, let's see what we get in Unfathomable. Civil Waymare is a five power Aquin that says at the start of your opponent's turn, that player discards the top card of their deck and exhausts each creature of that card's house. That could actually exhaust your creatures as well. So in a mirror match, this could be kind of dangerous, but I think it's I think it's really strong, just overall really strong. Uh, boxes your opponent in. Uh, they could of course decide to uh, pick a house that isn't affected by this. That's fine, but it does limit their options, and I think that's great. Then we have Kelping Hands, an artifact with an amber. It's a power. And it has Omni destroy Kelping Hands for the remainder of the turn. Each friendly creature gains poison. Wow, that's that's pretty cool. That could be, I mean, that turns clerics into uh, board wiping machines. Timothy the Damned is a four power Aquan. While you control a token creature, your opponent cannot forge keys. And when you play it, you make a token creature. Makes sense. Uh, that's also really nice amber control, right? It's It slows the tempo. Adult Swim, action with an amber. When you play it, you put each creature with power three or lower on top of its owner's deck in a random order. Obviously, that'll totally wipe our tokens. Uh, this might be a discard, depending on the situation. Befuddle, super good. It's an action with an amber. When you play it, you choose a house on your opponent's identity, on your opponent's identity card, and during their next turn, they can't play cards of other houses. So it's sort of a soft control the weak. Um, where they could they could still they can still go into a different house and use their cards they just can't play 
cards from another house. Interesting though, if you have two befuddles, you can essentially create a situation where your opponent cannot play cards. Uh, Crushing Deep is an action with an amber. Uh, very nice if you can get it set up for the late game. When you play it during your opponent's next turn, keys cost plus three for each forged key they have. So potentially plus six, which is strong. Then we have Frigorific Rod. It's an action with an amber. It's an item, and when you action it, you exhaust a creature or artifact. Um, the fact that it can exhaust an artifact is really nice. Maelstrom, that's some serious board control. It's an action. When you play it, you put each creature on top of its owner's deck in a random order and gain two chains. Um, Adult Swim uh, you know, only does that to the lower power creatures. Um, Maelstrom does it to everything pretty strong. Skullback Crab is a one power beast with poison. This one got a capture icon and it has action steal one. So unlikely to stay alive, but if it does, uh, that's a pretty great effect. Sunk Cost is an action. When you play it, you choose a house and your opponent discards a random card from their hand. If that card belongs to the chosen house, you make a token creature. Then we have Toxicuta Venom, an upgrade with an Amber that gives a creature poison. And then another Toxicuta Venom. Uh, I feel like there's a lot of pips in here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven pips in Unfathomable. One, two, only two in Star Alliance, so that brings us to nine. One, two, three, four. Four in Sanctum, so that takes us to 13. So actually, only 13 Amber Pips, but that's that's actually still pretty high. Um, and we have some cards that generate non-Pip uh, Amber, yeah, non-Pip Amber, uh, as well as some decent token generation. So, um, and I do I do think I like Cleric better than some of the other tokens, just because it has a really nice it comes into play and does something uh, and can stave off a, you know, it can slow the game down and let you not lose, which is a very important step toward winning. So, all right, uh, that was the War Lady that merges Ambition. I'm definitely going to be double sleeving this because I only have one uh, and it's a, it's a very cool setup. Um, you know, it's, I think there are probably going to be some decks that end up being very good that have these kind of effects. And, uh, and these are more saleable than like the vanity decks, right? If you have a great vanity deck, you're, you're not going to sell it because it has your name and it's not going to be valuable to anybody else in the way that it is to you. But uh, these things don't have any personal attachment. And so if somebody gets, but they are cool collector's items. So I think if somebody gets really, really strong, uh, really, really strong high saved Keyforge decks, those are, I think, going to fetch a, an extra high price. Um, yeah, and here I'll just show you on the card. I think people have seen these, but it has the nice little I saved Keyforge uh, and references the game found. So that's a very, very cool effect uh, to apply to the deck. So, yep, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed and that you will get out there and forge some keys.